Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. Uh, in this particular episode, I'd like to talk about an issue which comes up over and over again, especially with people uh, and really only with people who are applying for asylum. Now, many years back, uh, people used to be able to apply for asylum whenever. They could come here on one, one particular day, overstay, uh, you know, overstay for years, and then even be put in removal per or deportation proceedings and then apply for asylum at that day. However, the, uh, the real issue here is that a uh, law, which has been in effect and on the books for many years, has come into effect, and it's the one-year issue. And what the one-year issue says, basically, is that if you come into the U.S., and you're going to apply for asylum, you need to do it within one year of entering the U.S., or else you've basically lost the chance to apply. Um, and then there are ways of trying to get around the one-year issue. So, you know, normally, uh, you know, if, for example, you were here on a particular legal status, or if there was changed country conditions, uh, then you could say, oh, well, this happened in my country, therefore I have another year at which I can apply. So like an example would be, you know, somebody comes here from some country, um, you know, stays here 10 years, and then their brother is killed in their home country because of whatever reason they wanted to apply for asylum in the first place. So then after that, they would have another year to apply. Well, the one year issue based on that is relatively sparse uh, because most of the time, you know, events like that don't really happen or, you know, change country conditions where there's a new president and the new president is now instituting dictatorial type uh, changes, you know, things like that. Th those do happen, but not very often. So the reason for this video is to discuss in more detail about other ways which are more subtle to get around the one-year issue, which are effective, which can be argued rationally, and if it's denied, it can be appealed up and reversed. So one such way is a lot of people who go through uh, the issues regarding asylum, they are very um, uh, torn inside about what they've seen, what they've gone through, what they've experienced, you know, it's, I mean, it's easy for us to say, well, why don't you just say what, you know, what happened and apply for asylum. But it's a whole different thing for someone, for example, who has been beaten or tortured or raped or abused um, or persecuted and they has escaped to the U.S. The last thing they want to do is talk about it. And even to the point where, you know, when they might be ready, the one year has far surpassed the time allowed. So what we do in cases like that is we get these clients to go to a psychologist to analyze the situation, to find out perhaps that they had PTSD, that they uh, have had psychological damage because of it, and that perhaps they have not wanted to speak about it or couldn't speak about it until they went through some therapy and until they uh, have determined that they are ready to open up and ready to discuss what happened. Well, that would be a changed circumstance of a sufficient nature to be able to apply for asylum. So they come in on day one, you know, let's say five years later, they decide to go to therapy, they go for a while, and then it's determined after that time that they're sufficiently able to discuss their case. So then they apply for asylum. We apply for the one-year issue showing changed circumstances based on their mental condition and, you know, attaching a psychological report uh, which describes the process the person went through and why they're able to discuss it now. And then you have met a real good argument as to why the one-year issue should be granted and why this person should be permitted to apply for asylum. 
So there are other factors as well, not just the psychological damage, but sometimes they come here legally, for example, on an F1. And, you know, once the F1 expires years later, then they apply. Well, you can use the time it expired as a changed circumstance because they had originally been here in legal status. Something happened. They went out of status. And that point of going out of status is when they would apply for the changed circumstances. Uh, and then there's a wide variety and multitude of arguments that could be made based on the personal uh, situation of each person. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to get across here that it does not just fall on changed country conditions because a lot of immigration attorneys and the judge, that's the first thing they jump to. Now they go, well, you're country is the same bad condition it was 10 years ago uh, so therefore nothing has really changed it's bad but nothing has changed okay and th you can't just rely on that or you're going to lose the one year issue okay so given that if you have an asylum case or an issue with asylum go ahead and get back with me i'll be happy to let you know what can be done costs so forth and then we'll go from there um, if you like the video click like subscribe more on the coming videos thank you